What's up YouTube? Welcome to the Casual Gunner and today I'll be doing something a little different once again with another video that has no practical application but was something I was curious to know. I'm definitely an airgun enthusiast but I've also had a long fascination with medieval weapons and armor. Swords and shields are still mentioned in modern speech and are still highly symbolic of many things. For example, we still associate a shield with protection and a sword with attacking. The thing is, shields were meant to protect against weapons of ancient times. They didn't do so good against firearms. But the question is, would they be able to protect against the small bore air guns we use to hunt small game these days? Before testing whether or not a pellet gun would shoot through an ancient shield though, there needs to be a little context here. By the time knights came around in the late middle ages, shields had already been phased out because steel armor could do everything the shield could do but not take up your hand. Those who still chose to carry a shield would instead carry something more like this, a steel buckler. Now these are capable of deflecting firearm pistol rounds, so I know for a fact that I'll have no problem stopping anything from my pellet guns. The question is whether its larger wooden cousin from ancient times, before the age of the knights, would be able to do the same. I don't have any shields in my collection that I'd be willing to destroy with this test since I'm not made of money, but what I can do is build a shield up to spec out of roughly $10 worth of supply from Home Depot, and that's what I did here. So according to my research, early medieval shields like the types used by the Roman Legion were typically made of half-inch wood reinforced with rivets along the edge and laminated with either linen, rawhide, or fabric. Since we live in modern society, rawhide isn't exactly easy to find, but fabric is. So the shield is laminated in two layers of fabric, or more specifically, t-shirt material. And you can see here that it's reinforced with rivets that you can't see along the, uh, along the side right here. More rivets right here, and then rivets along this bar right here. That could either be wood or metal depending on what class. Only the most noble would have a shield that was reinforced with metal along this side. But for most soldiers, it would have been made of wood. And, of course, the lamination of two t-shirt materials as a substitute for fabric. And just to prove that the shield is up to spec, I'll test it out with a variety of medieval weapons before going at it with the air gun. First up is going to be with our sword. This is the Mtech Defender Extreme, which is a cheap beater sword that I'm not afraid to damage during this test. And it's made out of a 440 stainless steel. So, this sword actually will, is functional and can be used in battle, although it's far from ideal. I can get into that more in another video, but just know that this is a real working sword that actually can kill someone. As you can see, the shield took all those slashes perfectly, so now let's go for stabs. No back face deformation, nothing out the back. It stopped the stabs also. Next up will be my compound bow and three arrows, one of which has a field point, the other two have bullet points. Now I placed three water bottles behind the shield, so if the arrows go far in and deep enough to hurt the wielder, then the water bottles will break. So let's see what happens. And I'll be shooting from a distance of 25 feet. As you can see, both of the arrows stuck, but that is to be expected. A shield does take arrows, and the arrows do stick to the shield when it uh, when arrows strike it. It's not like in Minecraft or in the other games where, or in fantasy games, where they just bounce off the shield. But if you look at the back, you'll see that none, neither of the arrows managed to make it... They managed to pierce the shield, but only by a tiny bit. So the person who was wielding this was definitely a lot better having it than not having it. 
Next up, I'll fire two shots from my crossbow, and this crossbow has a draw weight of 120 pounds, two field tips. Same distance. Now the crossbow did some more damage, and you can see that it went deeper than the regular arrows, but as you can see, it looks like if uh, the person was directly behind the shield and had the shield right up against them, yeah, they're probably still going to get hurt. But if you were holding the shield away from yourself, this would no doubt be really scary, but the shield still would have saved you from the crossbow. So now we know the shield behaved exactly the way it should. Shields work by taking the arrows and letting them stick, but slowing them down as they stick. And in this case, it actually performed exactly just as well as a real medieval ancient shield would have. So now that we know that the shield behaves exactly the way it should, we can move on to the air guns to test the theory. First, we're going to start off with a Crossman American Classic, 10 pumps, shooting ancient and barracuda greens at the same distance, 25 feet. As you can see, the shield actually did a really good job stopping the pellet from the Crossman American Classic, but that's to be expected. It's an air pistol. I wasn't expecting it to go through the shield anyway. But air pistols were one thing. Would it stop an air rifle? Next up is the Daisy 880, 10 pumps. Now with the Daisy 880, you can see that it definitely made a deeper hole there, but I felt the other side, and nothing came out the other side. There wasn't even any back face deformation at all. And this is why the lamination was so important in these shields, because if this was bare wood, that pellet would have gone straight through. So the lamination definitely gave the shields a lot more strength than they would have been if they were just bare wood. Since the Daisy 880 doesn't cut it, it's time to step it up to 22 caliber. The next shot is going to be another H&N Barracuda Green out of the Gamo Swarm Maxim in 22. Well, the Gamo Swarm in 22 definitely blew out the back right here. This is the exit hole for where the pellet went through, but I didn't see any holes in the water bottles. So I'm going to shoot it again just to see if it wasn't a crazy fluke where it happened to miss every single water bottle. Entry hole in the front. Exit hole right here in the back. And... I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but that's the pellet right there in the bottom of this water bottle. But what happens if we up the ante again with a pre-charged pneumatic 22? This is the Gamo Urban. Same pellet, same distance. Let's see what it can do. Entrance hole, exit hole. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here, this is where the Gamma Urban blew it right out. Well, one of these came from the Gamma Swarm, the other's from the Gamma Urban. Either way, it blew through the shield, like right through it. So the original question was, would an ancient warrior's shield protect them against a small bore air gun? Like many other air gun questions out there, it really depends on the gun. An air pistol? Yes, it would protect them completely. A multi-pump air rifle? Yes, completely. A brake barrel air rifle? I would actually argue yes, it would protect them. Because if that shield wasn't there, that pellet would have passed through that water bottle completely. So, similar to the crossbow, it'll probably be a scary or painful experience, but not deadly. A PCP air rifle? No. I don't think the shield protected the wielder against that, and I think the experience even through the shield wouldn't have been a pleasant one. 
So in this case, I would argue that the shield did not protect the wielder against the PCP air rifle. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like it if you did, and check out my channel if air guns are your thing. And thank you for watching today's departure from the norm.